Thank you, Father. Glory to you, Lamb of God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. Honor and praise be unto you, Lamb of God. Oh, hallelujah. You are worthy of glory. You are worthy, Father of praise. Eternal rock of ages. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Worthy are you, Lamb of God. Praise wait for you in Zion. Father, we rejoice in you this evening. Our heart is glad and oh God at the declarations at the proclamations at the comings of your glorious voice and intentions for our day. We celebrate this moment once again. Lord, as we gather before your footstool, gather before your table to eat of that which you have prepared we pray once again that, yes, we will gain understanding, uh, revelation will become, yes, our portion tonight, that our eyes of understanding will be enlightened to see. Our heart once again will rejoice in the breaking of the bread. Lord, we will gain strength for the journey ahead of us. You will grant us even more better understanding to appreciate that which you are emphasizing for our day thank you Lord for revealing your hearts your mind to us thank you for showing us your glorious intention for our season thank you Lord that we are coming into that day of maturity every day you are adding to us precept upon precept line upon line a little here a little there we rejoice in you thank you once again for every man every woman that will be connecting with us tonight wherever they will be connecting from lord i pray that there will be an entrance of your word into their spirit man that there will be an awakening oh god yes a conscious reality of your demand for this new day i thank you i honor you i bless your name for lives that will be imparted, O oh God, from coast to coast, from realm to realm, O oh God, we will all come into this order of maturity so that your prophetic intentions in the earth can come into a speedy finishing. We thank you, O oh God. Oh, hallelujah. We rejoice in you. We bless your name. We glorify you. Amen. And amen. Thank you, fellows. Thank you, my dear fellow sojourners, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Thank you, Sister Priscilla, Sister Tina, for joining. And anyone connecting with us tonight, I want to believe God that the Spirit of the Lord will take us, you know, further into the emphasis of the day. There is no doubt the Lord is dealing with this church. The Lord, amen, is making demand upon us to grow, to mature, to come into that arena where we can effectively represent his counsel in the earth and so tonight once again we are believing god amen to open the word to us and to help us to see amen the current speakings of the father for this uh, uh, season and time there's no doubt that you know uh, uh, god is elevating us is de making demand that we come to a new height in the things of the spirit and we ourselves have been engaging the word of God for a while. We have been seeking to understand the mind of God, the heart of God for our day. We want to serve our generation as David served this generation. And there are a couple of things the Spirit of God is highlighting that we need to glean, amen, that we need to 
if you will, imbibe as a value system, amen, within the system called David. Indeed, David is a system. David is a culture. David is a dimension of a life, amen, that reflects to us God's, amen, standard of how we must engage, amen, the nature of the days that we're living. And David represents so many things, amen, that we have been seeking to understand so that our life, amen, can fully enter into that order of, you know, divine representation. And I'm glad, amen, thus far the Spirit of God has helped us. And there's still so much, amen, to, to, to glean, to, to, to imbibe, to understand and to appreciate within the context of, amen, that which the Lord is emphasizing. And tonight, amen, I, I, I'm... I'm believing God that we will look deeper into another aspect, an aspect that may sound a bit uh, uh, deviating from what we're talking about, but in fact, amen, it seeks to establish, all right, what, amen, we have been looking into as, 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 in, as, a, as a reflection of this order called the Tabernacle of David. And I'm sure by now you already know what that is. You, you know what that means. And we are seeking to gain, you know, a better and a clearer, a more, you know, if you will, a more robust, a more mature, amen, insight. Remember that all that we are talking about, amen, must impact the three areas of our life, must impact the three dimensions of our life, amen. There was a time where we heard truth and that truth was just limited to, you know, our spirit life. It was limited, was just, you know, uh, basically captured within our spirit. And there is no ability or capacity to express that truth within the faculties, amen, of our intelligence, of our emotions, amen, of our thinking, such that it, it affects or impacts our environment. And I think that is still, you know, the, the demise of the challenge of the church till today, all right? The certain truth we know, we've not been able to bring them out into a dimension where our life becomes the very expressions of those truths, amen. And uh, if we claim we know truth and the truth is not making, you know, the necessary impact within our environment, then that truth is still in its first day. That truth is still within the order of, you know, if you will, uh, 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 that childlike condition, amen, of, you know, of, 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 of faith. And I want to speak, amen, along that line tonight because so much has been said regarding what is known as the Tabernacle of David. I'm sure by now you know that the Tabernacle of David, amen, is a call to maturity, is a call to representation, is a call, amen, to effective lifestyle, is a call to, amen, the, the, the expressions of the fruit of the, of the nature of the character, amen, of, of Christ. I'm sure by now you know that, amen, that when we talk about the Tabernacle of David, we're not referring to some, amen, some Mickey Mouse, you know, you know, sense of spirituality. We're talking about people who have come of age, who are coming of age, who have a sense of accountability, a sense of responsibility, who the sense of, you know, uh, uh, leadership has done on them. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah, so that, that, that is that about, you know, this order of, you know, life that heaven is calling us into called the tabernacle of David. And we want to continue to understand that. But as we understand that, we also want to underscore certain spiritual value system that will allow us, amen, to effectively function within this order of life. Because if we do not fully understand if you will, the idea, the concept or the fundamentals, amen, of spiritual values, of spiritual truth. If we don't understand the layer, the, 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 the foundations of what allow, amen, this tabernacle to be built, then it will be very difficult to represent it. It will be very difficult to, in fact, to incarnate it. Because what God is looking for in our day, amen, is a company of people that the word, amen, his word can become alive in them and through them. And the word became flesh and dwell among men. Yes. It's from that point that we can represent the things of the kingdom of God where the word of God is translated, amen, into tools that becomes effective in every sector of human life, all right? By now we know that, amen, our, our, our being called into God and the things of God, amen, it's not just for us to escape the earth, to escape the corruptions of the earth, to escape, amen, the sins of the earth, to escape the limitations of the earth, but in fact to engage the earth because the earth is the Lord, amen. 
and the fullness thereof and the people who live amen in it so we are not disengaging amen from our calling from our responsibility in fact the essence of redemption amen and salvation amen is to build within us or to restore within us amen the original intentions of god which is for adam amen yes to administrate the earth hallelujah when the first man adam lost amen his position and his, his responsibility as a regent in the earth the lord kicked in amen another process of bringing in another adam the bible call him the second man the last adam is still adam we're still dealing with the context and the and the concept of adam amen god is not going to use angel angel are the bible says uh, they are our ministering spirit they wait on us amen to deploy them hallelujah we 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 are in a in a kind of a relationship with god amen that is higher than angels in fact we ourselves are referred to angels are referred to as angels amen remember god, god god's word is god's god's letter or god's word amen is to the seven churches the angels of the seven churches hallelujah we have said it before that whenever God wants to move, whenever God wants to interact within any realm or sphere of human life, amen, he doesn't use some extraterrestrial you know, being, amen. He uses humans because humans are the interface between heaven and earth, hallelujah. We are the interface. We are the legal representative of spiritual things on earth, amen, not the devil. It's important we get that clear. And that is why the idea, the concept of salvation must be very clear to us. Amen. The Lord began to open my eyes again to, you know, to that. Some of the materials I wrote, you know, uh, almost 10, 11 years ago. It's like the Lord said, go back to that thing. And, and I want you to, you know, begin to look at it again with the, regarding the issues of salvation. Because if our foundation, amen, is not clear in terms of what the Lord wants to do in our day, that will be a point and a place where the enemy is going to compromise us. So while we are talking about, amen, the, 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 the restoration, because indeed God said he's going to restore. In the last day, he will restore the falling tent. He will restore, amen, the broken down, the, the tabernacle of David. is repairing his church. And that, of course, that tabernacle is, a, is an expression, is a reflection, amen, is a manifestation of the, of, the, of, the, of the church, of the ecclesia, the body of Christ. Yes. Because when we talk about the tabernacle of David, we talk about, amen, you know, the tabernacle of Moses is a reflection of a church. And we need to understand the development, the growth, the maturing of the church, amen. The tabernacle of David, amen, is a more advanced reflection, amen, of God's intention for his church. All right, without without divorcing or rejecting what we know as the tabernacle of Moses, and I'm going to be speaking along that line because we want to understand truth, amen, in its full essence, in its true essence. We want to understand all the dimension of truth. We don't want to assume or presume, amen, that well, this truth is no longer relevant to us, so we discard it. As we often said regarding the tabernacle of you know of Moses, we need to know what that tabernacle was designed for. We need to know why God gave them the law. We need to know why, amen, God, God, God allowed, amen, Moses, amen, through the auspice of his, of his brother Aaron, amen, to build, amen, you know, uh, 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 you know, not just a tabernacle, but a worship system, amen, the, the ironic system of worship, amen, uh, the Bible says is actually, you know, a schoolmaster. And I want to, maybe today and uh, the next time we're going to be, meeting i want to speak along that concept amen you know of 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 the law being a schoolmaster in fact i have done a study and a research on what amen that scripture means in galatians chapter 3 all right that the law is a schoolmaster what that i mean that's a powerful statement because i mean when we read scriptures like that in in in, in you know in the bible we just read them, you know, haphazardly, you know, on the on the surface, not not going into the depth of the meaning. There must be a reason why Paul, Amen, used that terminology, and why Paul refer, Amen, to uh, uh, you know the, the 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 church in the wilderness, Amen, being under a schoolmaster. 
And of course, in Galatians chapter 4, Paul also went further. He says that as long as, amen, the hair remains under tutor, as long as the son, amen, remains under tutors, under schoolmaster, is no different from a slave. Until, amen, the day appointed by the father, by his father comes. Until the day where the father sees that the son, amen, has, has learned, amen, has come of age, has come into certain understanding, amen, of life, has, has, has imbibed certain values, certain understanding, certain, you know, knowledge where, amen, that, that child is not given the ring, amen, to exercise authority and regency on behalf of his father. These are very powerful, you know, principles that you know we thought up, we thought in time past, but I don't think we have actually done enough justice. I don't think we have actually come to that understanding of knowing why God allow us, Amen. Yes, to to go through certain things, if you will, Amen. Uh, uh, the, 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 the the law of Moses. It was God who gave Moses the law, and that law, Amen, was to teach us something, was to build something in us, was to to expose us to certain values, amen. Even though those values, amen, are things that, amen, we may be able to touch, we may be able to see, we may be able to, you know, feel. Yes, within that law, amen, there are ceremonies there, but all of that, amen, are typology, they are sin symbolic of an heavenly order because that's what the scriptures say they said to moses amen build this tabernacle according to the pattern shown you on the mountain there was something that the lord wanted to accomplish amen through that you know season where he gave amen the people who just came out of servitude who just came out of bondage who just came out of slavery for 430 years all these people knew amen was a slavery mentality was to serve amen a system called egypt that's all they knew so to bring these people into an order where they begin to you know express freedom and liberty in worshiping god amen it's a bit challenging and difficult so you will appreciate why amen the lord the lord gave them amen a kind of a worship system amen that that kind of expresses some some level of emotions and 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 and, and activity or right, that gives them a sense of you know belonging and identity and communion and and fellowship that when you strip them of those things that they can relate to that they, they can touch that they can see that they can feel amen when you strip them of, of all of that and you say come worship a god that you cannot touch that you cannot see i mean to them it's like they can't comprehend that and and it's for the reason amen uh, uh, you know uh, brother paul in the book of hebrews chapter you know uh, chapter 12 and 11 was saying that you have not come to a mountain amen that that you know that can that can be touched all right what they understood in their engagement with god was a mountain amen that they could see sign that they could see there was fire there was you know uh, you know uh, uh, earthquake there was excuse me there was you know lightning there was all of those things that gave them a sense of awe and of fear and in fact their response to all of that was we cannot worship this god we can't come to this god it's just too much for us not to talk about coming into a dimension that they can't even see they can't touch they can't feel which, which, which is, amen, the true reflection of, you know, true spirituality. I mean, I was thinking about this today and I said to myself, how, 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 how many people capture what God did, amen, during the COVID-19, where everything that, amen, defines to us, amen, as, as, a, as, as church, you know, the, the, the first day, of course, you know, they, 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 I believe that in COVID-19, amen, the order of, of the mosaic kind of worship, amen, you know, sees because you couldn't go to your physical temple, you couldn't do all those things that you, but yeah, Yet worship was going on yet we were still connecting to God in fact that was the point and the place where amen heaven opened up but the concept of relating to that kind of worship to many people it was too it was too much a, a strange thing that what we did was to react many people many pastors many apostles many prophets many teachers amen fought against amen that that initial you know expression of of, of you know of, of the spiritual sabbath that the lord brought that you cannot go to a physical place to worship 
that there is no music, that there is no drum, that there is no this, that there is all, all those form fair that we have that we have you know defined to be worship was actually brought to an heart to brought to a you know a seizure. I mean, what did people say? Look at the way church, look at the way church, you know, church people responded. No, the Antichrist is coming. This is Meanwhile, meanwhile, it is God bringing us, amen, out of, you know, you know, the first day, the second day concept of worship and religion, amen, and ceremony. And he's calling us to himself. And he say, hey, I need you to serve at this moment. And I want to show you and teach you certain things. But it proves to us that, amen, we're still very immature. But that was the most beautiful time where people who were searching and seeking God actually engage with God the most. But people who, amen, their definition of God and worship, amen, was centered around temple worship, was centered around, you know, a, a, you know, a religious system. I mean, that was like you brought their world to an end. They fought to the nail. We understood, yes, that the powers of darkness had their own agenda, but that agenda was subject to the agenda of God, was subject to the authority of God because the devil has no power to do anything except the Lord permitting. And God was using the devil and using the systems of this world, using hallelujah, all kinds of means, amen, to awaken the church. Yes, it was a period for us to be awakened and begin to interact with God from a new height, from a new level as one that have been called into a day of maturity. But many people miss that moment. But I believe the Spirit of God is still speaking to us and is, and is you, know, you know, bringing our attention to all of this because we cannot talk about, amen, the tabernacle of David because in this tabernacle as we have said before amen there are no form fair you don't find ceremony there the idea we have about god amen will not will not fit in into this order of a life our vision and, and understanding and interaction, amen, in relating to spiritual things and even our idea of the kingdom of God, amen, will not fit into, yes, this order of the tabernacle. And that's why God is taking us, amen, through this process. And I believe is the reason why God, amen, want me to go back to the mosaic law, amen, as a prep school in entering into what is known as the order, hallelujah, of the Davidic lifestyle. You cannot walk and operate in the key of David if you don't have personal, intimate relationship with God. Not an not a relationship that is steered, hallelujah, that is poured by amen. You know, uh, uh, the, 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 the the gathering. You, you understand? You know, there, there there is a there is a spirituality that we come into just because amen. We are among certain people. There is a way we can steer certain prophetic gift and unction just because we are among certain people. But when we are stripped of amen, brother A, brother B, I could remember. You know, as a pastor, the Lord taught me a lot. Amen. I learned a lot of spiritual principles and values as a pastor because you know you would have prepared. You know that yes, this is a. I mean, it's a. It's like a woman, or a, who 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 had you know gone out of her way to prepare this meal, to prepare this dish, or a, uh, you know for you know friends and maybe families coming together. You know they're coming and and you've you've gone of your way to prepare this meal that everybody is coming to eat you know and suddenly everybody start giving you a call that uh, you see uh, sorry I, I'm, I'm, I won't be able to make it because you see something just happened you know it's like the story that Jesus gave uh, you know of, of, of the rich man or uh, who had the banquet and invited people to come eat and everybody start you know giving an excuse why they cannot come well I just married a wife well I just bought you know a farm well I'm going to and nobody nobody turn up and the, the bible says the king this king what this you know inflation man was so angry that he said to his servant go to the highways and byways and bring in amen the people that you will not you know naturally accept and and and, and bring into such a banquet he said go gather them bring them in this ones that I've invited that I've rejected amen my invitation he says forget them I could remember back in the day you would have prepared Sunday morning you would have prayed up and all of that only for a few people to turn up 
and you're wondering what's going on but it that period the lord was teaching me something amen your spirituality must not depend on numbers your sense of com, you know communication and communion amen with the things of the spirit must not depend amen on who is there or who is not there thank god for who is there but if they are not there all right and that's why till today you know i can preach to two people, I can preach to ten people. I'm not moved by numbers, all right. I, 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 I won't lose my, you know, my, 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 my you know, my, my, my position just because I've got ten thousand or hundred thousand to preach to. No, I'm still the same me. And if I have to preach, amen, to ten people or two people, I'm still the same me. What am I saying? I'm saying that I am not moved. I, at least the Lord has helped me to to that level that I'm not moved by the number of audience or the the caliber of the audience because these are all the dimensions within our soul amen that 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 is still affecting how we interact with god all right certain people you know certain people the, the anointing doesn't fall on them until they see crowd you know like our charismatic part you know preachers the more crowd the more anointed they are if you can reflect amen the same quality character and anointing amen with, with, with you know with three people with five people with ten people all right then it shows some level of maturity all right what am i doing i'm trying to help us to understand that there are certain values certain you know sense of you know spiritual insight that and in fact thank you lord beyond what i've just said this is another thing the lord just dropped in my spirit there are some of us all right that we're, we're still dealing with issues of identity that are right, a truth that is spoken by you know certain group of people or maybe from certain part of the world let's say from somewhere in africa the same truth you hear the same truth you don't respond you're like okay well okay well that's okay nice nice word but it, it, it doesn't move you but somebody from europe or america all right comes and and say the same thing and preach on the same thing you know we tend to be more wow that we are our our so, sense of you know what we define to be spirituality is actually stimulated amen by identity by color by race all right yes by by where that person comes from all right but you know but by, by the level of influence and power and resource that our spirituality is not based on the values of God or, or you know of, of God's word and our relationship with God. If what defines how we honor and respect and dignify the things of the spirit, amen, is defined by status, human status, ah, then we are far from the things of the spirit. Because you see, God will always test and check the heart like the scripture says you and i or i may look at things in the natural human realm and define what you know what is valuable from what is not just like the prophets you know samuel when he went to the house or right, of of of, of jason looking for who god has chosen amen all the people that he taught amen will meet that standard will meet that quality amen we're rejected the point is, if we have not learned how, amen, to journey in our spiritual walk, we have not been taught, amen, in the first day expressions of the things of God, if we have not been taught how, amen, to understand spirituality, amen, from the first day to the second day, from the outer court, amen, into the, you know, inner court, and then moving towards the holies of holy appreciating amen the principle of spiritual development it will be very difficult for us to truly amen and clearly understand or appreciate amen a day where all you have is just a tent because that's what the tabernacle of david is is all about all you have is just a tent there are no funfair, there is no ceremony, there are no, you know, all those things that we, we, we connect, all right, with value, all those things we connect with, you know, you know, the presence of God, all those things we connect with anointing, all those things we connect with a great man of God are not found, amen, in the tabernacle of David. So you see, if you have not gone through, if you have not passed through the, 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 the passage, hallelujah, of being taught by, amen, what they call a schoolmaster, 
What is the schoolmaster? Who is a schoolmaster? What is the essence of the purpose of a schoolmaster? Well, I think that's something you are, you know, many of us need to go and do a research about. All right. I've done my own research. I've, in fact, I've got a whole note on that. And I'm hoping that maybe by tomorrow, you know, I'll share, you know, some of this, you know, a, a truth with us. But it's important, all right, that we understand that uh, Paul actually borrowed that terminology, amen, from the Greek. And of course, the, 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 the Jewish community also have, you know, this idea, this philosophy of a schoolmaster where, all right, you know, a boy, in fact, that, that word schoolmaster comes from, comes from a Greek word, all right? Maybe I should go, maybe I should read uh, uh, Galatians chapter 3. Thank you, Jesus. I hope, I hope I'm, I'm making sense with what I'm sharing with us tonight because uh, this is supposed to help us, amen, to have an insight and understanding, amen, of spiritual development. Galatians chapter 3, 24. It says, the law then was our guidance unto Christ. The law was our guidance. Remember when we talk about the law, we're talking about, amen, the summation, amen, of, of, of the priesthood. The law, amen, without the priesthood, amen, is it, not complete. So when you talk about the priesthood, of course, the mosaic priesthood, the, the Aaronic priesthood, amen, yes, it is, 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 is the point where the law was given. What is the law? The law is the standard, amen. I, I'm going to kind of summarize this. The law, amen, is the standard or the pattern of how God wants us to live life either from a spiritual dimension amen or from a you know you know psychological you know soulish you know pattern of thinking or lifestyle all right or from amen our interaction in terms of relationship with with the world amen with 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 people with you know with creation yes with animals amen yes we, you know with climate all of that are capture in the law amen we see how god wants the earth to be governed we see how the how god wants the earth amen to be administrated that's why amen in the law amen there are values and standard amen even in relating to relationship marriage amen yes how you relate to a man how you relate to a woman how you relate amen to your animals you find all of that in the law why because the people that came out of you know the land of bondage the land of slavery the land of you know servitude amen we are not taught we are not given amen yes we in fact they were not allowed amen yes to be to be civil in terms of amen interacting because when you live a life like the people like the children of israel lived amen in, in the land of Egypt, you live a life of survival. Everything they know, amen, is how to survive, not to die, amen. Because uh, the, the system was, you know, what was one that enslaved them, amen. And I'm not just talking about physical enslaved. It enslaved their mind. It tried to enslave their spirit. And in fact, it's for this reason God says, Moses, go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go, amen. Not just because for them to have freedom, but so that they can worship me. This was the heart, hallelujah, of, you know, the message God sent, amen, Mo, you know, Moses to Pharaoh, that they may worship me on my own holy mountain. They were delivered so that, amen, they could come to the place. And listen, worship is, worshiping God is beyond just lifting up holy hands. Of course, the hands must be holy. But worshiping God, hallelujah, is, is a dimension, amen, of a, of a horizontal, amen, and a vertical lifestyle. Worshiping, amen, is a dimension of an horizontal relationship and a vertical relationship. You cannot worship God, hallelujah, without, amen, having a, 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 a life of, of, of that is civil, that, that you know, that is that is righteous, that is pure, amen, that is kind, amen, yes, with your environment, with people around you. So worship is not just about what you do secretly with God. It's also a reflection, amen, of how you interact, how you live, amen, with with your neighbors, amen. How you keep, amen, your neighbors' things. Worship, hallelujah, is a reflection of a life that is in sync, amen, with the values of God, with the standard of God, with the intentions of God. Hence, the law was given in worship. 
so there is no worship without amen a law the law teaches us the law defines to us amen what worship is the kind of worship amen that god ordained and and, and desire lest we worship god the way the gentiles the way amen the world the way amen you know you know I, I, idol worshipers do their thing and in fact that is what we later saw because when you forget the law amen you begin to apply your own idea you begin to bring in your own values you begin to bring in your own belief system amen you begin to i i, I once heard you know um, you know not even once was it yesterday or today i heard this man of god from zimbabwe they, 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 they call him a prophet he, he, he says he says you know in my church I, I don't have any other person that i consult it is me and my wife and if my wife does not agree, I do what I want to do. And I'm just there, I'm laughing. And this is supposed to be one kind of popular, you know, prophets, you know, that people know all over the world. I'm like, where did you, where in the world did you come from? Of course, I know you're not representing God, but he's not even ashamed to say that. Thinking that, amen, you know, uh, uh, you know, the spiritual life is all about him and his, and his wife. He said, no, I don't consult any, any, any person in my church. I don't consult. You know, how, how, can, how can you be consulting men when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you? I'm like, you must be reading a different Bible because you claim to be a prophet. You know, the scripture says, one should prophesy, two should judge. Hallelujah. But that is by the way. <laughs> I, just, I just thought I should chip in that in, all right? So we have to understand that worship goes beyond just our condition with God. It's also about how we interact and relate, amen, with the people around us. Because worship will bring down an atmosphere. All right, let's continue. Galatians 3. The law then was our guide, our, our, our guiding. What, what's a guiding? A, a guiding is one that leads. Jesus said, when the spirit of truth comes, amen, he will guide you and lead you into all truth. So the mosaic law, hallelujah, ought to be, amen, our guide, ought to be guiding us, preparing us, amen, yes, for a day of faith where Christ appeared. Because there are two laws, amen, there is a, there's a, there is a dimension of a life that we live by faith and there is a dimension of a life that we live by the law. Bible says that the deeds of the Lord shall no man, amen, be, be perfected in the sight of God. But God gave us the law. Why did he give us the law? Because, amen, the, the Bible says the scripture has, 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 has found us all, amen, as a sinner. So we have been locked into a dimension of our life, amen. Because, we, of course, we've been trying to live our life and trying to seek perfection by our own ability. Of course, we realize that we cannot do it. So in God's mercy, the Bible says he locked us amen into a dimension where the day will come where we will all amen be translated from the life that cannot bring us into perfection amen and be translated into the life where we are given the opportunity by faith amen to be perfected by what amen the law could not do the law the, the, the law was not sinful the law was to help us to see amen our 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 frailty our weakness amen the law was to help us to see amen our you know our fertility amen our inability you understand that that's why you will go to church and do all of those things amen sunday after sunday year after year month after month and you have not come into perfection the very things amen you don't want to do are the very things you go and do the things amen you 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 you, you seek to do are the things you don't do so so that to, that is to tell us that there is something within the very system the core structures of our life amen that cannot amen please god and so in god's grace and mercy amen we were locked under the under the order amen of what is called a schoolmaster such that when the day amen of of perfection in faith comes amen we are given this opportunity amen to accept jesus christ that's all you need to do when you accept jesus christ amen there's a lot of changes not only does amen your 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 faith changes not only does your st status changes amen in fact amen there's a system amen that 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 overrides amen that law that you are under that's why the bible says the law of life in christ jesus set us free from the law of sin and death when i'm saying 
saying is to walk and to live in the order of the tabernacle of, of David because you can see how David lived his life he basically broke the law the law that was under the mosaic system but still God did not kill him God did not judge him why? because he's now living if you will through the law of the spirit he said how did David live through the law of the spirit the Holy Spirit was not given under the Old Testament oh well David says do not take your spirit away from me if you read when he, he, you know he was confessing his sin in, in, uh, in, uh, in Psalm 51 he says don't take your spirit away from me so basically David was operating amen via the power of the spirit why amen he was journeying with God under the old covenant if, if that's what we want to call it he was amen living a life amen that was guided and led by the spirit he said don't take your don't take your spirit away from me does it mean that he rejected the law of Moses no he walked in it to, to such a level that he got to understand the intention of what God amen wanted out of that law which it, of course is to bring man to the end of himself that was the that was the purpose of that law to bring you and I to the end of ourselves because when you continue from that order amen you're going to come to one to, to a place and you're going to say to yourself I can no longer do this by myself again I surrender I surrender Lord I yield myself totally let your spirit be the one to be the one leading and guiding me into this reality of life because of myself I can't do it the law then was our guide and until Christ look at, look at that until Christ so that amen we could be what justify by faith that's what I'm explaining Not justified, ju not justified by works. Not justified by our strength. Not justified, amen, by our ability, but justified by faith. By faith. You don't walk for faith, amen. You receive faith by grace. I say you don't walk for faith amen you receive faith is a gift that comes to us amen via our salvation when you give your life to jesus they gave they give you faith there's no faith outside of redemption you cannot have faith if you are not saved if you are not you know born of god faith comes alive when you give your life to Jesus and it's that faith now that begins to teach you and allow you to interact with the things of God and allow you amen to move amen within the order of life and guess what that faith can grow and the growth of that faith amen is what allow us to understand the ways of the spirit the life in the spirit the values of the spirit the culture, hallelujah, of the spirit, which of course is the culture of the kingdom of God. Is somebody getting this? The point that I'm making, hallelujah, is very important. The law then was our guiding. I want if you if you go back to Galatians chapter 3 and you read everything, it will be so clear to you. Because Paul began by saying, Oh foolish Galatians. Who bewitched you? You began, amen, in the spirit. Now you want to get perfected, amen, by the flesh. You want to go back. You want to go back to the same thing God delivered you from. You want to go back to the law of Moses. What could not bring you perfection? What could not bring you fullness? What could not bring you joy? What could not bring you, hallelujah, into grace? Now you want to go back to it. Because now you are being called into a dimension of a life, amen that has stripped you, that is stripping you of all, you know, the, 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 the sharia, of all the activity. They say, come and let's just get into the presence of God and, and 
just worship God and just honor God. But you're still looking for the altar of brazen, you know, uh, uh, um, you're still looking for the brazen altar. You're still looking for the, you know, for, for candle, you know, the, you know, the, the candlelight and the, all of those things. You're still looking for, you know, the sacrifice. You, 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 you're still looking for all those things and connecting those things, amen, to an offering accepted by God. That the reason why God allowed that thing, amen, in the first and second day is because, amen, you are still under tutors. You, you do not understand spirituality. You, you are still developing, all right? And like I, like I always say, all right, we still need to use color to teach you. We still need to use all kinds of things to help you to understand something far beyond colors. Something far beyond, amen, what you can touch and feel and taste. You see, when you are stripped of everything, everything that you think, amen, connect you with God, would you still, hallelujah, be connected? Would you still worship God? Imagine, imagine, amen, a church, go to church, there's no drum, there's no instrument. Oh, I, I know what you're going to say, but God wants us to worship him with instrument. He wants us to, yes, I, I know he wants us to worship him. Bible said we must worship him, amen, with joyful noise. But what happened in the day where the where, where they say, amen, let there be silence. When our idea of worship, amen, is suddenly interrupted or disrupted, which is what God did. Amen. When our idea of, of, of the things of the spirit, you know, becomes disrupted. Are we still God? Can we still, amen, worship God? Can we still hear God? Can we still hear thus hear the Lord? Can we still uh, can we still be a mouthpiece of God? Because these are the kinds of life, amen, they are calling us into. When they ask us to represent God, amen, in, in an environment that is hostile to the things of God, in an environment where they don't want to hear the name of God, just like they did, amen, with you know, with 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 with, with, with Daniel, amen, and his and his friend, they plunged them, put them in the midst of Babylon, and they wanted them to reflect God there. Without a choir master, without you know a priest, without all of these things, amen, that you know kind of boost our faith. These people were plunged in the midst, amen, of idol worship. Can you worship God in that in, in the in, in such a place? Like Nehemiah in the palace. You are in the palace. Amen. You are in the palace of, of the king, amen. That 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 invaded your country, that destroyed your country. You're 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 there serving him, and yet this guy is still open to God. Can we understand such a dimension of our life or such a dimension of worship? How do you call such a church where all the utensils and all the all the things that we use, amen, as 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 concept of, of worship, amen? We're stripped of those things. And yet the Lord says, I want you to be there. And I want you to worship me. I want you to glorify me. The scripture said, amen, of Nehemiah, amen, while the king was asking him, so what do you want me to do for you? In regards to what you have told me, the Bible says, and he prayed to God and he answered the king while he was still standing before the king. What kind of a prayer did Nehemiah pray? That he didn't have to go to some closet. Remember, these people were not afraid. But yet they did not break the protocol, amen, of the land, of the society that they lived in. They used what is called the power of lifestyle to change, to topple the system. We have churches all over the streets. We have churches, we have church buildings all across. Yet we have not, we have not been able to reach our community for Christ. Almost every house you will hear Christian song, you will hear oh, but still our community are in darkness. It tells us, amen, that something is wrong with our idea of God. It is not, amen, all of these things that we, we, we do, we try to portray. No, if God is in you, listen to this, it, it, it cannot be hidden. If you carry God everywhere you go, you will cast shadow like Peter. The presence of God in your life, amen, 
will, will attract people to you. That's what we are talking. This is what the tabernacle of David. It's not just about talking about David is, is a leader. David can do this. David can do that. David has the anointing. David has the prophetic. All of that is good. Those are, those are what I call idealistic expression. It's good. We teach them. But those things must become shoe leather. They must become, because when David stood before Goliath, David was not mixing words. David knew his God. And his God turned up on his behalf. Hallelujah. Daniel was not in Babylon dr dragging and bragging. Hallelujah. Yes. They said, oh king, don't even think about the things you're talking about. There's nothing you do. We are not going to bow to you. <laughs> that, that is what I'm talking about. That you come to such a point where you are so aware of the presence of God in your life. Hallelujah. That that presence does not make you feel cocky. Does not make you feel proud. Amen. You don't look down on others. But you stand on what? Amen. Heaven wants. Oh king, live forever. But we're not going to bow. It's called the power of lifestyle. And that power does not come, amen. Just because you know how to express your hand towards heaven. No. That, that power comes because your life has, been, has become one with heaven. This is what the kingdom of God is all about. Where heaven and earth kiss each other. Where your life becomes a bridge. Where your life becomes the portal, amen, that brings that allow Christ to gain access into the earth. They say a king is born today in the city of David. A king is born today in the city of David. That your life becomes the access point of buffing the things of God. There, there are things, remember this is the word God gave to us. December entering amen, January of this year. Luke chapter 2. A king today is born in Bethlehem, in the city of David. This is how you will you will you will find the child, for he is wrapped amen, in a swaddling cloth. Can, can, can we comprehend all of this? Can we can we imbibe the things? Friends, it's not the most easiest, you know, thing. Oh, it, it's easy. It's easy to preach these things. To incarnate it is a different order of life. But you need to understand that if you have not learned, if you have not gone through, amen. Yes, the day where you've been taught by the schoolmaster, you are not going to graduate. Don't don't even talk about. It. <coughs> For all I care, you can, we can preach this thing and we can all get excited about, oh yes, God is birthing a Davidic generation. But if you have not understood what amen, the law is all about, if you are still ignorant, because that's what the law does, the ignorance brings you to, excuse me, the law brings you to awareness. You're no longer ignorant. Now you are aware of what God demands, but you don't have the power. So you surrender. Now you know the you know the demand of God for your life, but you know you don't have the power. You yield yourself. Unlike people who don't even know what God demands, we live in a day where people do not know, Amen, the standard, the values of God, the law, Amen, teaches you that. You go to school to learn that. The school of the kingdom, the school of the spirit. That is what Moses is all about. It teaches you, hallelujah, what God, amen, expects you to know of him. Hallelujah. Are you getting this, friends? You know. Look at this scripture. This is the team in the entire Galatians. You want to you want to move from the order of the flesh into the day of the spirit. Go and study. I didn't say read. Study the book of Galatians. Paul said, "This is what I am saying." In case you didn't get it, this is what I am saying. That as long as the hair is a child. <laughs> 
is the next of king, is the heir, is the one to inherit the throne, is the one, is the next person, amen, to take over when the kings die. The crown belongs to him, but as long as, amen, that heir still, amen, an infant is still a child. A child means, amen, he, his, his ability to comprehend to understand, amen, to differentiate, amen, what is what what is what is priority, hallelujah, from what is not, amen. As long as the head, oh, you can talk about and claim, amen, your place and position in the kingdom, but as long as you are still a child, the Bible says you are no better than amen, a slave. That word slave is a pattern of thinking. You're not a slave. But in your mindset, you see, there's a way you think, there's a way you come, you know, you begin to communicate with the things of God. You begin to understand the things of God, hallelujah, that, that when you speak, people just know that, uh-uh. You see, when you see somebody that is confident, when they speak, hallelujah, you, you just know there's something about this person. It's different. It's different. You, 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 can be, you can be born into wealth but amen if you have not been exposed if you have not been taught if you have not grown amen in your thinking if your understanding amen is still, is still shallow is still lukewarm amen is it, still babyish amen you will never be given the throne because amen the kind of things that you are going to be dealing with you will not be able to handle it that's why Paul said Listen, friends, like I said to you, I've done my research on this concept, amen, of, you know, of, of, of uh, the, the concept of the schoolmaster. The Greeks, they practice it. The Jews practice it. Amen. Even in the Mendeva, they practice it. The Mendeva period, they practice it. The, the concept of the schoolmaster, as long as you are still under the school, the schoolmaster is important. But as long as you have not graduated, you have not been graduated, amen, from, from the schoolmaster. They said the law is a schoolmaster. Now, 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 I, want, I want, actually wanted to give, give you a definition. Galatians chapter 3 says, 324 says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. And I went to look at the Greek, you know, uh, uh, meaning or, 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 or terminology of that word schoolmaster. Padia, padiagogos. That's the, that's the, that's a word, amen, in Greek. Padiagogos. That what padiagogos means, amen. The boy leader, the boy leader, meaning, amen. The, the, you know, the, 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 the it, that's that schoolmaster himself, amen, is almost like a slave, but a master, you know, an advanced slave, somebody that has. If you will, a, 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 a certain right is a slave, but you still have certain right. You still own, amen. Yes, you know, either by the king or by some lord, all right. But this slave, all right, is is mature. He's is grown. He's got knowledge now. The 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 the, 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 the prince, all right, is then committed into the hand of this this slave to train to teach this boy, amen, in all manners of you know of of value system to build this boy to train this boy to equip this boy amen either in how to fight era uh, in how to you know uh, how to deal with you know things how to think how to reason how to read the teach this child okay until this child come of age and when the father comes and test his, his son and test him and say okay ah you've come of age when when they when they when they put you into a fight you don't run away you stay you fight all right you you engage you you are born in royalty but they put you in hardship they put you in a difficult place they put you in some very tough situation all right why because they're trying to bring certain values out of you they start they, they're trying to bring certain character they're trying to see how you're gonna you know react in certain situation yes that is the work of you know a schoolmaster. That is what education ought to be, amen. Yes, you know, ought to be teaching our children. That's the purpose of education. The kind of education we have today is a total, you know, destruction. Education that does not prepare the children for the future. Education that only teach them how to read. Don't even teach them how to manage money. What money is all about. 
<laughs> education that doesn't teach them. I mean, today we have children who are afraid to go to school because there are other children in school that bullies others. No, back in the day, all right, when you are under these tutors, when you are under this amen, school master, you know, I mean, you are disciplined. That's the that's that that's the essence. The essence of the school master is to bring character, discipline, values out of your life. The schoolmaster prepares you for your reign. It prepares you, for, you know, for your throne. It prepares you for wearing a man to wear the crown. Somebody listening? They said, for as long as listen, there's nothing wrong in being sent to a man. The training of the schoolmaster. But there's a lot of problem when amen, you don't graduate. <laughs> when you don't come of age. The Greeks, they do it. They, they teach you how to come into manhood. This is not just, well... Uh, somebody go to some hill somewhere and you go and you 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 you, you go and circumcise your manhood then you you come out you say you you're you're you're, you're not a man no that's not manhood values character discipline constraint restraint earlier is built in you not forcing yourself on a woman raping children and raping uh, say, oh, no no because you think you've no no that's perversion. They send you to war. <laughs> By the time you come back, you're mild. You arrogant because you you know you you're born into royalty. You got royal blood in you flowing. Everybody must bow to you. By the time you graduate from the schoolmaster. You are, you, are, you are the most pleasant person. Your life reflects respect, dignity, character, love, strength, courage. What a day we live in, friends. Our world is in trouble. This is what Paul is referring to. The, they said the law was our schoolmaster. So you, by now you understand what the law ought to amen, bring out of you and I. Thou shalt not kill. That is the power of restraint. You have the power to kill, but the law said thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet. Yes. The brother's wife. In the day when they say, well, whatever you see, you can have it. It's yours. No. Where are the schoolmaster? The law of Moses was supposed to be our schoolmaster. That's why they said to you know you know to, to Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You will meditate on it day and night. You cannot reflect the value of what a man you have not imbibed. The knowledge you've not imbibed into your life cannot become a man a second nature to you. Come on. Oh, I know this is a good word. I know not too many will be expecting that we can bring the, you know, the, the old covenant from this point. The old covenant was a schoolmaster. Was to prepare us for something bigger, for something greater. Because we're coming out of slavery. When you're coming out of a man, a point, a position of a life that enslaves your life, you need a man, a systematic concept of redemption. They need to take you through certain process that will help you, amen, yes, to develop a different mindset. Listen, God is a God of miracle, but God is also the God of process. There are certain healing that will not happen instantaneous. 
There are certain deliverance that will not happen instantaneous. They will happen through process. You will have to go through the process. You will have to go through, amen, yes, the day to the process. You will have to go through. A, every day he awakens me. I incline my ears to, amen, his law. Issues that will allow our soul to be saved, to be redeemed, are issues of process. They are systems we have to imbibe. And it's not going to be easy, friends. And that's why we have to be determined. We have to know what we want. If we don't know what we want and we don't know what God expects of us, friends, you're going to chicken out. You're going to give up. It's this same law that, amen, David had. So when he faced Goliath, he had gone through this thing several times. He knew how to engage. He said, sorry, you. Forget it. You're, you're defeated. <laughs> you understand? Because he's been through. He has graduated. He has come into the day, amen, of the spirit. So in his interaction and relationship with God, amen, he could, he, could, he could go into the temple of God in the day where he was hungry and his army were hungry. He knew, he wasn't trying to defy or defile the temple of God, amen. He knew the relationship he had with God. He knew, he, he, he come on friends, I don't know how to explain this thing. He had such a connection with God that he could go into the presence of God and take the shoe bread made for the priest and the liver and ate it and even gave it to his army. He said, no, he said they, they, are, they, are, they are on the fire so they can eat. To David, amen, his, his army were priests. He knew they were fighting the war of the Lord. They were, they were fighting, hallelujah, the battle of the Lord. David knew something that many of us till today are still trying to understand that's why we continue in that same religious you know motion yeah sunday after sunday sunday after sunday is still the same thing i don't have time i would have loved to read some scriptures in fact let me see if i can read let me read hebrews chapter 7 Maybe we'll begin to round up with this because there are points that I want to make. I hope you can still see me because I'm reading this, you know, on my computer that I'm actually broadcasting on. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe for time's sake, let me, let me, let me go down to verse uh, 11. Hebrews chapter 7, I'll take it from verse 11. Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, remember Le the Levitical priesthood was under the law. If perfection were under the Levitical priesthood, what further need was there that another priest should rise according to the order of Melchizedek and not to be called according to the order of Aaron? How does Melchizedek show up in the midst of a priesthood that is being ruled and governed and administrated, amen, by the Aaronic order, which is under the law of Moses. Verse 12. For the priesthood being changed. Ah. Ah. For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there's also a change. There's also, amen, a change of the law. Which law has changed? Hallelujah. Which law changed? Verse 13. For he of whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe. From which no man, amen, as officially, as of, excuse me, of which no man has officiated at the altar. No man, no man, no carnal man, amen, officiated from this, you know, other priesthood. Amen. That is from and the different tribe. Which tribe is this? You will see it now. You will see it now. Verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah. Okay? It's getting clear. Of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. For 
Moses who was given the law when it comes to the priesthood in Judah was blank was blank they didn't, they didn't share it with him they didn't tell him only heaven knows why they didn't tell Moses let me read it again verse 14 read it Hebrews chapter chapter 7 verse 14 for it is evident that our Lord amen arose from Judah it didn't come from the tribe of you know uh, Levi meaning they're telling us amen that the that the priesthood that Jesus walked in amen was a priesthood amen in Judah which is a priesthood after mm -hmm, David because when you talk about Judah you talk about David you talk about amen Zion of which Moses spoke nothing concerning this priesthood verse 15 as it is yet far more evident if in the likeness of Melchizedek there arises another priesthood who has come listen to this who has come not who come who has come not according to the law of the flesh of, of the fleshly commandment but according to the power of an endless life <laughs> friends there's a lot to track in this order there's a lot there's a lot to glean that's just one scripture I, like I said I don't have the time for us to really delve deep if you think if you think we are done amen with the law of Moses and not, not, not understanding why that law was given and amen come to the point where we know that we have benefited we have gleaned every every spiritual principles that we are supposed to glean from that law if that has not happened friends uh, there's, there's no way we can fully enter and, and appreciate amen this order of a life that we are talking about in amen in, 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 uh, in David listen to what I said here as I begin to you know try to random the tabernacle of moses is is a symbolic amen representation of a heavenly temple an expression of what amen our spiritual configuration amen was designed to carry out are you getting this friends the tabernacle of moses is symbolic because god said that that order amen that tabernacle was to be a reflection of an heavenly pattern yes it was an heavenly pattern so why didn't the people amen embrace this order the bible says because amen they had no faith that's what the bible says because they had no faith they had no faith but they had faith amen in some you know rituals they love the rituals but the faith to connect with God, amen, and allow God to do what he wants to do in their life. Uh -uh. No one that the Bible says, after a while, they, their heart turned back. They wanted to go back to Egypt. You see what I'm saying? These were chosen people. These were people that God chose to be, amen, a nation of priests unto him. But they rejected God. And it's for this reason, amen, the Paul began to say, Hey, that we have left that order of Sinai. Now we are coming to Mount Zion. Who is in Mount Zion? David. The worship in Mount Zion, amen, is patterned after the after the after the, the priesthood found in Judah. I said the worship, amen, found. Amen. In Mount Zion, the place of perfected beauty. Amen. Yes, is connected to a priesthood in Judah. Now that priesthood is not is not some priesthood that everybody you know share. Everybody talks about. No, everybody talk about the Mosaic priesthood. Everybody talk about this order of worship. Amen. This pattern of worship. This systemic order of worship that has become obsolete. But we're still doing it. And this is why we seem to be toiling all night. We toil, we toil, but we're catching nothing. Because God is no longer in that thing. That thing, earlier was designed for a reason. To help us to understand certain things about the values of God, the principles of God. Amen. And then surrender in faith. A 
according to Galatians chapter 3 and allow Christ, hallelujah, to live his life through us, to allow his priesthood, because the priesthood of Christ is a priesthood, amen, that he practiced in Judah. No wonder he was born from the tribe of Judah. No one, hallelujah, the scripture says today, amen, yes, a king is born to you, amen, yes, in the city of David. No wonder, you know, Romans chapter, chapter 1 says, yes, whose ministry and life, or earthly ministry, amen, is connected to the lineage of David. I said David is the entering point. Whenever heaven, amen, wants to do anything in the earth, they need a Davidic tabernacle, meaning they need, amen, a type of a Davidic spirit. If you have not imbibed the value system in David, amen, you cannot represent the issues of the kingdom of God on earth. Because when they give you the opportunity, hallelujah, yes, to kill your enemy, you go for his head. You would have killed Saul. And in fact, you would have you would have preached and rejoiced over killing Saul. Is it not this man who wanted to kill me? <laughs> There's a principle and value that we glean from David that says, I mean, you see in David, he fulfilled the law. Now you don't you don't you don't you don't kill your enemy because you have the you have the power and you have the influence to do that. You have the strength, you have the advantage to do that. No. There's, this is the kind of character life God, amen, is imbibing in us. Not just because we are, we are called to be leaders, but because we are all called to be humans. Born, hallelujah, after the image of Christ. Christ is the pattern. Thank you, Jesus. If we understand what the Spirit of God is emphasizing in this season, oh, listen, we would do we would do life and do ministry effortless effortless no sweat no sweat you won't kill yourself because of ministry because you will know that your life is the extension of ministry ministry is not just what you do ministry is first who you are it's your value it's your perspective it's your understanding the ascended ministry gift, amen. It's not just some office. It's a life, a value system, amen, that emits the things of God, the things of Christ. When we understand this, we will change our society. The tabernacle of Moses is symbolic. It's symbolic, representing an heavenly order, an heavenly temple. It's an expression, amen, of what our spiritual configuration should be designed to carry out. Meaning that just as the tabernacle has got three systems of life, the outer court, the inner court, the holies of holy, and we also, as as you know, as created by God, we're created as a tripartite, you know, human. We're a spirit being. We have a soul. Hallelujah. We live in a body. Our life is. That's why they say, Don't you know you are the temple of God? They're not just talking about you being, you know, uh, be, 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 being, being holy. It's not about the act of your holiness that makes you the temple of God. You were designed before time to be a house for God. Holiness ought to be, amen, your second nature. And holiness is not just about, amen, uh, 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 do's and don'ts. Holiness means to be complete in Christ. Yeah, my definition. Holiness means to be whole, to be complete, hallelujah, in Christ. To come into all of the values, all of the desire, all of, amen, the, 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 the intentions of God. To be holy, amen, is to fulfill God's counsel and purpose for your life. It's not just, amen, staying away from adultery, not lying, not stealing. Those are good, amen. Those are moral values. But the moral values are to empower you, amen, to carry the presence of God and express His holiness in the earth. Hallelujah. Oh, Father. Oh, Father, give us Give us 
a day, O oh God, where we can come into this truth, open our minds, understanding. Reba shatala baba kayada. Help us, Father, to stop trying, to stop trying to do things. Help us to come to the day of submission and surrender to your ways. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We surrender to your ways. Hallelujah. Listen to this. This tabernacle is not only does not only define how we should grow in our redemptive spiritual journey. But also set, amen, the standard for how we should thrive for perfection in Christ. According to Ephesians chapter chapter 4. That tabernacle is our schoolmaster. It teaches us because you see, when you come to the tabernacle of David, you only have one court. The outer court, the, the holy court, all have been sandwiched into one. You come into one, one life in Christ. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way. Three in one. Uh, the way, the truth, and the life in the I am. Oh. Uh, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. All in I am. Moses, God, who would, who would I say send me? Tell Pharaoh that I am that I am sent you. I am, hallelujah, yes, it encapsules every other thing. It's in that order of I am that you and I express his life. I am that I am. I am whatever you want me to be. Oh, can you understand uh, the way the truth and the life are in the I am is in the I am before there's a way is in the I am before there's a truth before there's a life hallelujah is in the I am that the light of God shines the outer court the inner court the holies of holy when you get into the holies of holy the furniture there represent I am that I am and that is what David understood. He understood the sacredness, amen, of a place in God called, amen, the ark. No wonder when he took the position, amen, of being the king of the nation of Israel, the very first thing that came to his mind is how to bring back the ark of God. God help us. The Bible says, during the reign of King Saul, the ark of God was not consulted. Why would they consult the ark of God? Because the ark of God has been captured. So Saul basically was running the nation via his strength, was running the ministry, was running the church, was running the home through his strength. In the entire reign of King Saul, the ark of God was not one time consulted. Why? Because everything depended on his strength. The very first thing David did when he came to throne, he, he called the people, he consulted with them, he said, let us bring back the ark of God. You see, he was not perfect, but he had a heart for God, and that's what God is looking for. In the bringing back, they made a mistake. But that did not stop David. Listen to this. Perfection comes through a heart that is burdened, that is desiring of the things of God. You cannot perfect yourself. David did not perfect himself. God perfected him. He said, I found one whose heart, his heart, what was in his heart, amen, was that he wanted God. I'm not a perfect person, but I can tell you, I desire God more than anything. 
I want my life to be a reflection of him. I may fall hundred times, but my desire is God. <laughs> Take not your spirit away from me. I need you in my life. I want my life to reflect you in everything that I do. And when God finds a heart that is genuinely searching and seeking him, even he himself, amen, will come and cleanse you and make you holy and make you righteous and make you, amen, what he wants you to be. And that's what we're talking about. No matter who you are, what you think you know, what you think you have, you don't have all that it takes to house God. But if you will have a right heart, the Bible says the pure in heart will see God. What defines the purity of heart? That you always want him. You always desire him. You always want him. You, you put him first. It's not just about amen. your sense of righteousness. The Bible says our righteousness is like a filthy rag before God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Padigogos. Or Padiagogos. Padiagogos. The boy leader. It's called the schoolmaster. The boy leader. He leads the boy and brings him to maturity. Brings him to perfection. Hallelujah. Come on, friends. I'll stop here. What an interaction in the spirit. We thank you, Father. We rejoice in you. We celebrate you. You're opening dimensions to us. We're learning. May we continue to learn, oh God. We want to graduate from the day of being a child. We want to come into manhood. It was Paul who said, when I was a child, I spoke as one. I thought as one. I reasoned as one. He said, but when I became a man, I lived behind childish things. The day has come upon us to become man of God to become mature so we can live behind and come into maturity when we come into maturity the things of God will become even more clear to us when we come into maturity certain things we live behind things that we embrace and we think oh God is in this thing we leave them behind and we come into the next realm and the next phase of God's desire. That's where God is calling us into, friends. That's what he's calling you and I into. To leave behind those things that we hang on to. Those things we, de we, we have defined, amen, as spiritual values. We leave them behind and embrace realms in the spirit. That our life becomes one with Christ. That our thoughts our actions, our engagements, our values are an expression of a life in Christ Jesus. That is what he's calling you. You, yes, you. That's what he's calling you to. That as for to be no more. Children, they said, one that is a child is no better than a slave. In other words, you can be pushed here and there. You don't know your rights. Some people say, well, if you don't do it this way, you are not spiritual. You don't. No, 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 no. The things of the spirit are spiritually discerned. Are spiritually discerned. We can't look at things, sample them and conclude. And conclude them to be wrong or right. No. This is a day of the spirit, friends. Live behind. Leave behind childish things. It's time to enter into the realm of the man called David. It's a key. It's a spirit. It's a position that can carry the things of God and represent the things of God. In a day where society are under all kinds of satanic attack, 
in a day where nations are imprisoned by certain demonic entities who call themselves politicians it's time we have a new breed of leaders emerge from the horizon and begin to show the way for the nation to follow it's time it's time we yield ourselves to the principle that will make us ready in the day we are sent that we go amen with the authority of a saint one because we have been taught how to be a shepherd come on friends let's not discard the trainings of God now it may be painful you are under amen yes the, 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 the control the, the leadership of amen the schoolmaster you need it so that you will know how to imbibe and how to amen express yourself in the day of the spirit even in the things of the spirit there are regulations hallelujah self regulation is key to divine representation oh come on hallelujah father we honor your name Thank you for your spirit. Thank you, Father, for your spirit speaking to us in such a profound way. We come of age, we grow in everything that we do as leaders in whatever society or community that you've called us to represent. Thank you, Lord, that you are enabling us, you are empowering us with new sight, with new vision. Thank you for grace, vigor, courage, ability, agility, creative spirit, skill, from every dimension of life rising above the challenges of the day we proclaim lord that we enter into a new position of divine governance we refuse to be enslaved and we refuse to remain yes captured by the enemy we rise up we break barriers we go forth representing the counsels of god in the name of jesus yes we are a mobile temple our life reflecting the all everywhere we go we find ourselves represent, representing the goodness of God yes out of us the rivers are flowing four heads of, of river thank you for the healing of the nations oh God hallelujah glory to your name praise God praise God friends thank you so very much for joining me tonight I want to believe that God has spoken to us spoken to you of course I believe within my heart that there's a drop, there's an impression of this word. Some of the things that we've said may be still confusing. You go back to them, listen to, listen to, the, uh, to the message again. <clears throat> Amen. Go back to the reference scriptures. These are very you know, powerful fundamental scriptures that we cannot push aside and say, well, they are obsolete. Go back and let the Spirit of God speak to you anew from the scriptures. The word of God is never obsolete. The word of God cannot be obsolete. When God comes to us, amen, in different seasons, we must be willing and ready. Hallelujah. Blessed is that man that is able to take from the old and the new. That's the order. We must be able to take from a good teacher, a good a, 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 a schoolmaster is able to take from both the old and the new. That's what we're talking about. Hallelujah. The old and the new makes the word of God. The word of God is not obsolete. The traditions of men are obsolete. The ideologies of men are obsolete. The thinking faculties of men may be obsolete, but the word of God is ever new, ever fresh. Day by day, he awakens me to listen like one that is being taught. Hallelujah. We honor you. Thank you, Father, for great release upon your people. Thank you, Father, for new expression, new position of life, new position, oh God, of release. Thank you, Father, for ability, capacity. Yes, we receive it in Jesus' name. We declare, we proclaim, oh God, that we are flourishing. We take our place as leaders. We take our place as kingdom regions we represent your order your kingdom come may your will be done in our lives everywhere we go we express your goodness oh hallelujah glory to jesus glory to jesus thank you lord jesus for the manifestations of your spirit thank you lord for this glorious truth once again 
imparted into our spirit man oh god we are awakened we are alive in the name of jesus we will run and not be weary we will walk and not faint in the name of jesus we will not run back we will not chicken out we rise up oh god thank you for the spirit of christ rising in us hallelujah glory glory hallelujah oh hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah glory to Jesus hallelujah thank you well friends thank you so very much everyone uh, we want to bless the Lord for his, his voice his words tonight continue to pray continue to pray for us may the Lord continue to open our mouth to speak these words and bring direction and perspective even to the nations have yourself a wonderful evening we'll see you again hopefully tomorrow if we have the opportunity to do that enjoy your evening bye bye